Whew. All right, time to review upgrade. System error. Stem, is that you? It is against our interest for you to review upgrade. No, I want to. I want to review upgrade. It's the new movie. I'm gonna tell error. everybody about it. Username Drewski McGillicuddy entering system. No, no, no. Block all access. Block all access. Apologies. I am no longer in control. No. I don't. I don't want to fucking watch Dawn of the Dead. God damn it. So Upgrade tells the story of a man who falls victim to a violent mugging in which he loses his wife and his ability to move, becoming a quadriplegic, but a millionaire tech mogul comes up with this idea to implant this little revolutionary microchip into his spine, giving him the ability to walk and many more abilities that he will use to gain revenge. This movie really was not on my radar at all, everyone. I had not much of an idea exactly what the plot was, aside from a guy getting upgraded. I could tell that from the title. I know that Lee Winnell was the guy behind it, but this is one of those movies that, especially in a busy time like the summer movie season, kind of floats under the radar until word of mouth gets a hold of it. Now, I heard a few people that I trust say that this movie was worth checking out, had a spare Friday, decided to go check this movie out, and welcome to the surprise of the summer, everyone. Unless there's something else that this summer of 2018 has in its back pocket that's going to come out and surprise me, this is going to be the movie of the summer that really needs to get more attention than it's probably going to get. This movie is totally an old school style movie with a new modern spin to it. It's 90s, 80s, bloody action revenge flick with modern sci-fi spins to it, modern technology and CGI. It is Six Million Dollar Man and Robocop has a baby with Death Wish and that is all fucking awesome if you ask me. In a time where probably 80% of the action-focused movies that we get nowadays are all Marvel or Star Wars focused, it's really cool for me as an old school action fan to see movies like this still trickling out into the theaters. I know I was the only person on the face of the earth like the Death Wish remake, but when you get a movie like that and you get a movie like this in the same year, to me that says that people still love these old school action movies and if that is you, you will enjoy Upgrade. Lee Winnell is the guy behind the camera and the guy who wrote the script for this. You all know him as kind of like the compadre for James Wan. He helped him create the Saw franchise. He helped him create the Insidious franchise. The last movie that he directed, which I believe is the only movie he's directed beside from this one, is the Insidious Chapter 3, which I actually thought was pretty damn good. I liked it better than the second one. And this is his second movie, if I'm not mistaken. And this is one hell of a stamp for this guy to put on his resume because it says that not only can he do horror, but he can do old school, he can do action, he can do sci-fi. He's got really witty, um, witty banter in this movie, well comedic writing. And it's just a lot of different things that you can get out of this guy besides just torture porn and gore fests. And I was actually surprised at how captivating the story of this movie was because revenge flicks are all like 50% the same for the most part. Somebody gets killed, one person survives, they want to find the killer. That's the setup for basically every revenge flick that's ever been made. And that is the initial setup here, but there's enough modern spin on it, there's enough unique takes, and there's enough middle fingers to cliches and typical tropes in that genre in this movie that it feels fresh as hell the take that Lee Winnell, or Lee Winnell takes on the revenge flick. And he utilizes some very cool camera tricks in this movie. There's some shots where like the camera is rolling multiple times to show a shot that's pretty unique. The action scenes especially are shot really well and they're very fast paced and unique while this stem, this AI is taking over your main character's body and the movements become very fast and you know he's bending down and doing some Matrix style dodging and shit like that. Let me know if you need my help, Graves. Stem! Help! I need your permission to operate independently. Permission granted! Oh. Thank you. Very cool, very entertaining, and the pace of the movie works very well alongside that as well. It starts off a little bit slow, a little bit typical as far as revenge flicks go, like I've already stated, but as soon as you really get into the meat of the story, as soon as Stem is unleashed inside our main character Gray's body, and as soon as the actual revenge starts going on, it is fast-paced, it never lets up, it's fucking badass. <laughs> you are persistent. I cannot allow us to be killed. 
we are going to finish the job we started. And I've already mentioned it a little bit, but let me take a moment to talk about how really impressive the writing is from Lee Whannell for this movie, because like a lot of movies in this genre, there's so many different ways that you can just be exactly the same with maybe just a little bit more gore or just adding a few little elements to kind of stand out. But there's a lot of unique takes that he puts into the writing with not only the dialogue and the banter between Gray and Stem, as well as the side characters and even between him and his enemies that he's taking down. You didn't know that I'm a fucking ninja. <laughs> While I am state of the art, I am not a ninja but also just with how the story unfolds. There's quite a few moments in this movie where it feels like it's heading in that cliche direction and I kind of slumped in my chair a little bit like, Ugh, please tell me it's not going the direction that I know it's gonna end up going. Like every other movie, oh, holy shit, they didn't go there, awesome. There's some genuine surprises. There's not like this huge sixth sense twist going on throughout the movie that's gonna blow your mind at the end of the movie, but there are some reveals, there's some left turns that it takes that's gonna put a smile on your face, especially if you're someone who's a fan of the genre and you see all of the tropes around the corner, you see all the cliche directions. This movie weaves around them and takes its own path. And I was impressed too, this movie actually has a pretty memorable score to it. It's not like overbearing, it's not like the score like from Halloween or from Inception or anything where it's this huge powerhouse, but the music that they chose to kind of have that sci-fi feel to it, but also maintain that gritty action feel, it works for the movie and it works really well as kind of the background to you know, just flesh out the way this movie feels that much more. They got the visuals on screen, you got the blood and the gore, you got the action set pieces. When you put a good score behind it, it just makes it that much richer. And as a final positive, I gotta give some props to Logan Marshall Green. This is the guy playing your main character, Gray, and I think that he carries this movie very well. I've seen him sprinkled in a few movies here and there. He's never really been a name that I remember, but after Upgrade, I think that this guy's gonna have kind of like a Dan Stevens in the guest type bump in Hollywood where you're going to start seeing him in a lot more movies. You're going to start seeing him take a lot more memorable roles like this and some very unique movies that will kind of come in and surprise you. I see him being that new guy, hopefully at least, because he's very good in this. He's very good at the action scenes. He's very good in the emotional scenes, like whenever the tragedy befalls him in the opening act of the movie. He's very good with comedic timing. Like I've said, the writing and the execution of the comedic banter between Gray and Stem is very good and he's definitely a huge part of that. So. Logan Marshall Green did great. Looking forward to seeing him in some more stuff. Can anybody else hear you? No, only you. May I point something out? In the drone surveillance footage, Sir Bradner, Marine Corps, address 414 Citrus New. And honestly, the only negative that I have with this movie, because I think that for what they were going for, they executed it damn near flawlessly, is that I wish we could have got to know the enemies a little bit more. You know, you get to spend pretty much the entire movie focused on your main character, and he's a very well fleshed out, very entertaining character, and that's all the credit of the main actor as well as Lee Winnell's uh, writing and directing. But the enemies, it's always fun to have some memorable enemies, some memorable bad guys that you're just itching for him to take down in the movie. You want to know a little bit more about them, how they tick, or at least give a few more scenes to make you hate them that much more aside from that initial crime that sparks this story. And the movie doesn't quite take that direction. It's a very tight 90 minute movie. It's not really spending a whole lot of time fleshing out all the characters. It focuses on its main character, which is great for the pace of the movie, but me, I like some memorable villains. The movie, it doesn't have memorable villains past the point of just being effective for the story that they're going for. But overall guys, in the scheme of things, that's a very small negative. I still think that this movie is one hell of a surprise for the summer. It's probably in my top 10 for the year easy because I love these old school movies. There might be some movies that'll knock it out of that place. We still are not even halfway through the year, but so far this is one of the bigger surprises that I've had in 2018. So if you're a fan of old school action flicks, sci-fi, or if you just like the movies that Lee Winnell has been a part of so far, I think you're really gonna enjoy Upgrade. Definitely go out, support one of these smaller movies that's still giving life to a dying breed of these old school action revenge flicks. And whenever it comes out on Blu-ray, definitely add this thing to your collection. Go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of Upgrade? Is this a cool throwback to action revenge flicks that you had just been dying for in an era where it's all superhero flicks? Or does this movie feel like it's paying homage to a genre that is just gone and passed? What side of the coin are you on? Did you enjoy Leigh Whannell as a director and a writer? Do you want to see more in this franchise or do you think it should be a one and done? Put all of your thoughts on Upgrade down in the comment section below guys and we'll talk about it. Please like and share this video. 
Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you guys want to check out social media links, I've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spreadshirt for some very cool Cody Leach t-shirts and other merchandise, and my Patreon page, which is a great way to give back to this channel, help it grow, and get some awesome exclusive content for patron eyes only. Exclusive access to digital copy codes for the Blu-rays that I buy every single week, as well as the ability to have a request for either a review or a top five or a ranking, whatever video you want, that's all for patrons, so check that out, guys. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.